seriously, I mean, there are lots of people who think about writing books and it's not as easy to make that jump. I mean, how did you go from point A to point B? Well, you know, when I wrote She's Got That Vibe, it was based on a, a profound experience that I had. And it, it's funny how God works, because when you, when you look back, you can see exactly how the dots were linked together. So I used to work for the rag trade, which is the making and the selling of clothes. And one day, whilst I was sat at the desk, I, you know, the phone was ringing and they were constantly asked for me, can I speak to Valerie? And one of the reasons for that is because um, I found out through, through that experience that I have, I don't know if I still have it, um, what they call 100% colour vision, which means I can detect the minutest changes in colours. And so the customers would always say, can I speak to Valerie? Because they would bring their material and I would match it to the thread colour, like just on point. Yes, so my phone was always busy. So one day, whilst I was uh, sat there, you know, you kind of like, well, there's a lull in the phones, uh, with the phone ringing. Um, I would doze off and just daydream. And as the phone rang, I went to reach for the phone and I noticed that I'd written on a pad of paper to know the difference between right and wrong. And I, that was my first recollection of actually writing these words. And I thought, why, why do I keep writing these words to know the difference between right and wrong? And it would literally haunt me for years until I started working at uh, waste management when I started you know, to manage, manage the men. So this one particular Friday, I remember I was going to a seminar and again, I must have gone into some kind of reverie and the words were written again to know the difference between right and wrong. And when I got to the, semin when I got to the seminar, it was day two, um, the, the coach, he had put us in this kind of like meditative state because we'd come in from our respective environments and he was trying to get everybody calm on the same kind of energy kind of feel. And he announced an intermission and I wanted to ask a question. So everybody left the room and I went to the front. He was speaking to a lady. So if you imagine the room set up seminar style, so you've got chairs on that side, aisle down the middle, and then another set of chairs. So I went and sat to the front. And as I sat to the front, just waiting for the coach to finish speaking to a young lady, I heard the words as clear as day, as clear as my voice is now, I heard, the vo I heard a voice that said, there is no difference. And I knew it was the answer to the words that had literally haunted me all those years to know the difference between right and wrong. And immediately I said, there's no difference between right and wrong. That doesn't make sense. But what I found is that looking and interacting with people with that filter, people will say to me, Vary, I find you so calm to be around. Um, or I feel like I can share so much. How, how do you do that? And it was, it was only later that I realized that when I'm listening to someone, because I was listening to them from the filter, there's no difference between right and wrong. In other words, what you're sharing with me is neither right and wrong. I was able to suspend judgment. And when you're able to sus suspend judgment, a person feels heard. And if they feel heard, they feel that their voice can be expressed to you without reservation. And so by that time, I'd got used to hearing Spirit's voice. Like I, I hear it audibly, it's, it's kind of strange. And so when I wrote She's Got That Vibe, I remember sitting in my room and thinking, you know, like, God, there's so many dating and courtship coaches out there. How do I distinguish myself from all the others out there? And as I sat there, the Spirit said to me, I told you that there's no difference between right and wrong. So I said, what is, what is it you're trying to tell me? And then, then I, it dropped in my spirit. There's no such thing as Mr. Right or Mr. Wrong. There's only you and your perspective because what you judge determines what you see. Yes. And so that's how um, 
She's Got That Vibe was written and then that's how I became a coach out of She's Got That Vibe. But even when I wrote She's Got That Vibe, I knew that that was just part of the journey. There was more inside of me and I didn't know why at that time, you know, God in his profound wisdom had made me write the book She's Got That Vibe first. So that's how She's Got That Vibe came about. And yes, you refer to She's Got That Vibe. You've written two other books. And I mean, you've touched on how the difference came about, but how would, a bit like a mother who has different children, how would you say the journey leading to the difference is yeah. different to the previous two? They seem to be different. It's like you can have a tree that has different apples on it and each apple appears to be distinct, but they're actually all connected by the same tree. Now, when I received the message that there's no difference between right and wrong, I said, Spirit, can you explain that to me? I really want to understand what it means. So one day I was sat in my daughter's bedroom and there's a window opposite. And Spirit said to me, you see that bench outside of your window? Because when you look out the window, there's a bench. And be adamant that that tree is above you. And I said, yes. And Spirit said, but if you were in that aeroplane looking down on that tree, you would be adamant that that tree is below you. And I said, yes. So Spirit said, so which version of you is right? There's no difference between right and wrong. The only difference is your viewpoint, your perspective. And so when I got that in my spirit, I then began to understand. So. You can see why at one point the book was called The Difference and then I had changed it to Perspective and then I changed it back to The, the Difference because I wanted to feed the information or feed the message in the way that I, that I received it. So Spirit went on to say to me that because when you have a perspective, you only ever see a slice of the pie. You don't see the total picture. So therefore... You can give me your perspective of a situation, but it's based on your experience in life. You know, the walk you've walked, the thoughts that you thought. And if I had that experience, I would probably come to the same conclusion that you've come to. And I can look at the same situation and from my walk in life, look at the same thing in a completely different way, but it doesn't make either of us right or wrong. But a lot of people, what they do is they engage in conflict whilst peace is just standing patiently at the side and saying, hey, I'm here, but was engaged in conflict and that's how wars are created. So that's where the difference between right and wrong came from. So the link is, is that it's all to do with your perspective and how you see it. So your mantra for a long while has been, there is no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask a slightly challenging question now. So we have a situation where a young girl is being abused mm -hmm. and it's sexual abuse and I think a lot of people would think that's just totally abhorrent behavior and it's wrong on all levels. How would you marry there is no right or wrong to that situation? Right. So it's not so much that there is no no such thing as right and wrong. It's more the experience that it led me to have. So therefore, in me looking at that situation, I could judge it as right and wrong. But it's not for me to judge. It's for me to suspend judgment because I'm only ever, I'm only seeing a part of the picture. So if I look at, for example, the way that I was brought up and the, the experience that I had, then I could look at that situation as with my perspective and judge it a particular way, but yet somehow it has prepared me for who I am today and for the message that I'm giving out today. So judgment is not for me, it's for, it's for God who has vision, who sees everything. So, I mean, moving on, um, the difference. I'm tempted to ask you to read a paragraph. A paragraph? Or maybe, yeah, maybe a, a favourite section in your book um, to entice us to get all the friends and family to go out and buy it. 
Okay, so number one, setting the stage. Express to the person your wish to have a conversation to enable the both of you to establish a greater connection and have both your needs met. You can say, I want for us to have an opportunity to get back on track or clear the air. Or if you're in a romantic relationship, you can say, it would make me feel supported if I could just decharge with you. I'd feel great if you could do that for me. So that's number one. When you can lay aside your ego, you make room for spirit. So number two, state your intention. First, open that conversation with what you genuinely love, admire, or respect about that person. For example, I love that you work hard and are committed to saving lives, or I respect you for fill in the blank with what you truly appreciate about the person. And then the third step is to state the facts. Ensure there is no emotional charge around what you state here. Be emotionally centered. State simply the facts. For example, we agreed to meet at 8 p.m. You did not turn up for the meeting and I did not receive a call to say you could not make it. Keep it strictly factual for if you do not, your conversation will go off at a tangent you did not intend. Don't bring up the past that you cannot change. And then number four, state your feelings. When you did that, this is how I felt. I felt frustrated. I felt that my time was unappreciated. I could have organized my morning differently. I'm now feeling overwhelmed. A person cannot argue with how you feel. How you feel is how you feel. It's your truth. And in the expressing of it, you will feel liberated. Give the person the chance to express their side. They may say words to the effect of, this is what happened. I apologize and appreciate where you're coming from. And then number five, just to conclude that part. In this case, it could simply be, in the future, I will give you notice if I cannot make it. So you can make appropriate arrangements. In future, if the agreement is broken, you simply refer back to the agreement, which is an entity in itself. So that's an example of how to resolve a sticky situation. <laughs> Three things that you were going to highlight to somebody who's considering buying the difference they're at crossroads or you know they're just going through a situation shall we say what would those top three be the top top thing is to understand that you're first at your your spiritual being you're unlimited there is nothing that you you cannot achieve um so first of all, understand that there's a difference between who you think you are as opposed to who you are, who God created you to be. Um, the second one is, is to work on your limiting beliefs, the beliefs that hold you back, that tell you that you can't do something. And the third thing is, is that once you've actually done that, you can find your voice and make a difference. Thank you. So final question. I have a wild card, random question for Valerie. So you're coming home one day and God forbid your house is on fire. And if you had to rush in and save one thing, God forbid, I said, <laughs> just one thing that you could save, what would that be? One thing. Wow. That's a wild. That's... My, my shoes. <laughs> My favorite, my favorite pair of shoes. <laughs> Depends on who's in the building. Well, I'm going to assume that the building, if the free of human beings. yeah, if it was free of human beings, hey, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Valerie A. Campbell. Hope you enjoyed that. <laughs>